In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create an object mask. Now, if you've worked with Photoshop, um, you may be familiar with masks, and they are what they sound like. They mask off a section. You determine what the section you want to shine through from a previous layer. So this can be used for a lot of different things and cool effects. So let's create one. Let's go to Create New Flash File, ActionScript 3.0. And let's bring up our tools, F4. And start out with our, our first layer here. Let's just create a some, rather than actually using the text tool, I'm just going to use the brush tool. And I'm going to make it red red brush and I don't want object drawing tool whoops I thought it was selected but it's not we want to keep with our merged drawing tool and um, I don't know if you've noticed this here before but there's a lot of different options once you choose the brush um, how big of a brush do you want maybe you want a square nib instead um, paint behind. There's some other cool effects um, you could experiment with here, but let's just leave it default because we're dealing with the mask in this level and not the brushes. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to start by painting something. I'm going to just paint the words hello. And what's cool about the brush tool is you could be somewhat haphazard in the way you draw but it'll help you out because <laughs> it'll still make it look like cool brush strokes. So you don't have to be the perfect drawer or artist. See how it made it look like they're just kind of brush strokes. I could have done a better job, but anyway. All right. Now what I want to do is let's zoom out a little bit. 50%. I want to transform that. So let me, oops, edit, undo selection, undo selection, undo selection. And I want to capture the whole, the whole thing. And I want to modify it. And I want to free transform it. And let's say I want to bring it sideways, like so. Maybe even a little bit more. Nah, that was fine. I like that. I just thought it might look cool with our effect that we're about to do if we had diagonal lettering. And I might move it a little bit more. There. All right. Now what we're going to do is insert another layer either right click over layer we know this or we could use this here insert layer now on this layer I'm gonna create an oval now being that this is gonna be the mask it doesn't really matter what color I do the oval I'm gonna just choose something different than red just so you see it is different and I'm just gonna make a circle that would be big enough to um, cover the height of hello so I might modify the uh, free transform another way of free transforming it is right clicking over it Oops. that I might move it up just a little bit this way whoops I'll click outside I just want to move it a little bit up here like so and now um, before we get any further let's determine how long we want this clip to be that we're going to do so I'm going to do um, somewhere between 40 and 45. So on layer 1, which I created hello on, I'm going to insert a keyframe there so I determine how long that lettering will be there, hello. And then before I 
um, insert a keyframe for our circle, I want to convert it to a movie clip. So we either can hit F8 or we can go modify, convert to symbol. And um, we'll learn in the future um, the advantages. Well, in this lesson, you're going to learn the advantages of, of creating in something into a, um, a symbol. Uh, you have a lot more flexibility with the object, and you can use it over and over again. Um, but in order to animate something, you need to convert it to a movie clip or a graphic. In this case, we'll just convert it to a movie clip because you have the most flexibility with it. And I'm going to call it circle. It really doesn't matter what you call it. Leave everything else as default. Just make sure that this is movie clip. Hit OK. All right, there it is as a symbol, and it's put in our library as a circle. That's the name I named it. And now, over here, I'm going to insert our keyframe. This is after I've converted it to a symbol for that layer. Insert keyframe. And just while I'm at it, I'm going to rename, double click on layer one, call it hello, click layer, layer two, and call it circle, like so. Now, once I've created that keyframe here, I'm going to drag the symbol to the section I want it to end on, which is right down here. And now, click anywhere in between, and we, we've done this before, we're going to tween this is under the Properties tab, and do Motion. Now, if we dragged our cursor across here, we see the direction of our circle. So we could, we could hit Enter and play our animation that way. Or we can Control, Test Movie, take a look at it that way. And it'll keep I'm uh, playing over and over. Okay. Now we get to the masking part. Now we are going to convert this circle we created into a mask. Well, that layer we're going to create into a mask. So right click over circle and click mask. Now immediately when you do, it'll all disappear, but just don't worry, because then you can just click the unlock button and that allows you to see your masked layers. So now what we've done is now you notice it indented the layer below it. Hello. So this is our mask and it's masking that layer is our mask so it's blocking out all of the page except where I created that circle. So now being that I've made the circle tween over hello or motion over hello it's going to allow hello to shine through um, just where the circle is so that's what masking does so it masks every it masks everything that's indented below it and if we had other layers we could choose which layers we want masked under the masked layer and you see the little icon for it where it shows black with a little uh, checkered and uh, oval there shows that it's a masked layer. So um, the object I create in the masked layer, that determines where, or multiple objects, where layers that are indented below it shine through. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. So um, we're not going to see it if we do control play. You're not going to see the, the mask take effect. You have to, in this case with masking, do test movie. So control enter or control test movie here. And you see how we don't see the green circle? It's because it's just allowing the layer below it, which is the only layer we have, hello, to shine through only where the green circle is. And being that the green circle is moving, it looks like hello is being revealed. Isn't that pretty cool? So that's what masking can accomplish. Now let's Let's make this a little bit more interesting and let's add another layer to it above circle. So click on um, our top layer here, the mask layer, and then do insert layer. And we're going to call this light. 
like so. Now, if we click back, move everything back to frame one. Now, on the light layer, the top one I just created, I'm going to create another oval over top this one. And you'll see what it's for in a second. But I'm going to choose my fill color as white. I'm going to go back in here again and change the alpha, which is the um, saturation of that color. In other words, you can lighten up the color. And I'm going to lighten it up to, let's say, 44%, like so. All right. And you notice this little checkered board here over top of our fill color? That symbolizes that I've lightened the alpha. In other words, if you didn't see the checkered board, that means it was a solid color. So we know we have lessened the intensity or the saturation of the bucket or the color. Now, another thing we can do to make this interesting is on the circle layer, because we don't, if we modify anything on the hello layer, um, we're only going to modify the color that is revealed as the green mask passes over. But I want the whole background to be black for this. So what I'm going to do is on the circle layer, or on the mask layer, I'm going to make the background. So I'm going to grab my selection tool, click somewhere on the background, and I'm going to change it from white to black like so. So now if we did a quick control test movie we can see how hello is revealed on a black background which looks pretty cool actually. But we have to do it on the mask layer because um, if we did it on the hello layer we'd only see black for the background of where the hello is revealed. Alright now that we've got our black background now on our light layer what we're gonna do is create another oval. We already said we were going to do that, but I got distracted. Make sure our alpha, it's pick, I picked white, and then I made the alpha or the intensity down to like 40% somewhere in there. Now I'm going to make an oval slightly larger than the one we have here. Like so. And you see how it's a lighter color. And now I'm going to select it with the selection tool. I'm going to right click and free transform it. And I'm going to move it. And what I really want, now I'm going to go back to the selection tool. Because I want it to overlap a little or at least cover the green symbol we created. And you'll see what this is for in a second. So now, I'm going to convert that light circle that I made here. I'm going to convert it to a symbol. So modify, or F8, convert to symbol. Again, make sure it's a movie clip, and I'm going to call this light. I hit OK. And now we see it, how it overlaps the green. And we'll see what this is going to accomplish in a second. Now, once you've made something into a symbol, like I said, you have a lot more flexibility with it. Now we could apply a filter to it under properties here, whereas we couldn't before if it wasn't converted to a symbol. Now we can, under the plus sign here, add. And I want to add a blur. So if I add a blur, make it like that. Let's see how that looks your X, Y coordinates, you notice how it's moving both of them at the same time, which is fine. And that's what this little lock symbol is. You could unlock it. Um, we won't deal with that right now. But anyway, I've made, you can see how the blur is adjusted. I'm going to go into 100% just to show you how it was affected, the blur. See, less of a blur, more of an outside blur, which I think that looks pretty good, about 19 or 20. Okay, now that we've applied that filter to it, and make all these changes to the, the symbol that we created into a movie clip first, then we create our keyframe at the end here. And then we grab, let me go back to 50%. Then we grab the symbol, 
move it over top where we want it to go to down here and then click somewhere in between and then we click motion and now let's test our movie watch what happens pretty cool huh it's like a lighting effect you know where it's like almost like a flashlight that's going over top of the black background so this is one really cool effect that you can do with masking objects in flash so go over the lesson again a few times if you need to see how it's done but remember to make your changes to your object and, and, and everything before you create your keyframe or your symbol that you've created from your object make all your changes and then create your keyframe then move your object to where you want it to end at then do your tweening as your last step alright enjoy <laughs>